personally, I've been having a great week, you know, uh, going through the things that I see on film. But together as a team, uh, we've been just staying focused uh, on the task at hand. Uh, you know, week's been going well so far. Okay, the first question is going to come from Mike Rodak. Mike? Um, uh, just what sort of pride do you take in, in not having allowed a touchdown at Cincinnati? And just what sort of challenge do you think it would be to, to face Jamison Williams in this game? Uh, it's going to be a big challenge, uh, first of all. But I take a lot of pride in that, and that just comes with my preparation, you know, leading up to the game. It's not something that I just think of uh, when I'm off the field or when I'm on the field. Uh, I just take every snap one at a time. All right, the next question will come from Bill Carroll. Bill? Thank you so much for your time. So, Mr. Gardner, we just recently talked, obviously, to your, your coach, and it's clear that he trusts you, you guys trust each other. How do you decide, how do you do the math, sort of risk and reward about when to take, pick a chance, maybe jump something versus try to protect against the big play? Uh, you just got to be a playmaker. It's just a natural instinct. Um, it doesn't take as much thinking. You just got to play fast and just do whatever you feel is best. Uh, that's all. All right, the next question is from Jeff Spiegel. Yeah, Ma, can you can you just talk about this game and this moment and, and how big it is and how big it would be for this program to take down a heavyweight like Alabama? It would be a big win, um, especially coming in as the underdog. <clears throat> I've never been on a stage this big. Uh, I've been in championships in like, my younger days, but never won like this, obviously. Uh, it would mean a lot for the program and for the world uh, to be able to show the world uh, what we're able to do. All right, the next question is from Brandon Seho. Brandon? Hey, Sauce, I was just um, curious, what, what's the mindset of this team and what makes this team so special this year? You guys went to Notre Dame, were able to beat, beat the Irish there. You're able to you know, kind of persevere through those midseason woes of you know, maybe not playing as, as good as the outside knows and want you to, and, and you're able to finish 13-0 and get, get to the playoff. What um, – what makes this team so special to be able to play like this? Just being able to have a brotherhood, you know, uh, it's not just position groups. Uh, I could talk to whoever on my team. They could talk to me no matter what position they play. Um, that's the main thing, just having a strong bond, strong brotherhood, and just being able to focus on the task at hand and not get so caught up on the outside noise. All right, the next question is from Zachary Braziller. Plus, what, when, you, when you look at, at, at James Dunn Williams, what kind of stands out the most and how, how big of a challenge is he for you guys? Um, he's a fast guy. He's a good receiver. Um, it's going to be a, a big challenge for us. Um, you know, it's Alabama. I wouldn't expect nothing less, but we're looking forward to it. Next question is from Gary Miller. Gary? I saw us uh, talking to Kobe. He, he calls you guys your partner in crime, dynamic duo. Uh, he gives you all the credit for winning the Thorpe Award. How would you describe your relationship and uh, how it's grown, especially with this, the things you guys have gone through this year? Um, that's my brother. Um, I came in very young, and he was always the older guy in the corner group. So I, he took me under his wing. And for me to be able to just have the success that I'm having now, uh, I could be able to like help motivate him in certain aspects, and he do the same thing to me. So that's just been helping our bond get stronger and stronger. All right. The next question is from Jeremy Roush. Hey, Ahmad. Uh, I wanted to ask you something about what Luke Fickle told us about a week or so ago. He said when you first arrived at the program, the first couple of years, you were just a skinny kid that he didn't think would have a chance to actually become what you are now. I want to ask you, did you know how he felt about you early on? And do you think you've surprised him and even yourself and what you've become? Um, I surprised everyone. Uh, I didn't think I was going to be able to just get on the field like that because I was so small. Uh, I think they had plans of redshirting me, but I didn't know. I just used to be out there just playing, um, just listening to the older guys. I came in, I didn't do too much talking, um, 
And I just listened to the older guys, and they helped me get on the field. Uh, they started – the corner group started trusting me. So that just helped the coaches, uh, you know, believe in me. And that's why I was able to make plays at early on as a freshman and ultimately be where I am today. All right, our next question is from Dan Tortora. So it's just, just what you could say. You mentioned being uh, underdogs. Have you felt that way about – this team, is that something that you guys carry as like kind of a chip on your shoulder from last season into this season, not being in the college football playoff last year? Or do you not see yourselves as underdogs from the inside out? From the inside out, we don't see ourselves as underdogs. Uh, we feel like we could play with whoever. But from the outside in, everybody's going to see us as an underdog. It's not saying that those opinions matter, but we just know uh, what it is and what we have to do. And that, just, that way, we just keep pushing each other so we can you know, go out and handle the task at hand. Our next question is from A.P. Stedham. Hi, Ahmad. Um, Ahmad, what makes uh, playing against Bryce Young so challenging? And have you ever competed against him before at any level? And he, does it remind you of any other quarterbacks you've played against? Um, I'm ne I've never competed against him. I don't know where he's from. But all I can say is he's a good quarterback. He's a great quarterback. He's very smart even though he's young, you know, and uh, that's all I really know about him. All right, our next question will come from Justin Williams of The Athletic. Justin. Hey, Sauce. Um, just curious, the, the linebacker group in front of you, a lot has been made about the secondary, even the defensive line, but there's, there's kind of an interesting mix of different players in that linebacker group, especially if you include the snipers. What does that mix, what benefit does that give you guys as a defense as a whole? Can you repeat the question? I ain't hear the beginning yeah. part. I'm sorry. The the mix of linebackers you have, especially if you include the snipers in there, with the kind of the different skills and strengths that they have, what benefit does that give you guys as a defense as a whole? Uh, great benefit. You know, when you got everybody just playing fast and flying all around the field, that make everyone's job easier. You know, so it helps us in the back end when the D-line's getting after the quarterback, you know, and it helps us when the backers and the snipers getting hands on the receivers and rerouting them. You know, so as long as all of us handle our 111, it makes everything much easier. Our next question is from Eric Olson of the Associated Press. Yeah, Sauce, so I was, uh, wanted to see if you could just comment a little bit on the aspect of uh, Alabama year in and year out is, is you know, all over the draft. Uh, Cincinnati hasn't had a first-round pick in 50 years, and you got a bunch of guys that are kind of on the draft boards right now. How, how big of an opportunity is this stage, just from a pure display of talent, is this uh, for Cincinnati? How, how big of an opportunity to showcase that talent is this? It's a huge opportunity. Um, we know that we have first-round talent, but we just don't think about it. We feel like we don't have to prove anything to anyone because we know what it is for real. Um, but it's a huge opportunity. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Our next question will come from Tony Sukalis. Hey, Sauce, uh, this might be a, a step in the dark here, but did, did you go up against uh, Jamison Williams at all when, I guess, in 2019 uh, when you guys played Ohio State? And if so, just what was that like? No, nah, I was guarding Gary Wilson, number five. Oh, okay. And that was, like, later in the game. Yeah, yeah, I, just, I was just wondering. Just, and then just uh, what kind of challenges does he have besides his speed, um, Jamison, that is, just, just besides just being fast? What, what, what do you think he presents? He's a smart, he's a smart receiver. He's smart and he's fast, quick. He can catch, he got good hands. All right, our next question will come from Christopher Heidel. Hi, Sauce, thanks for taking my question today. Um, Alabama's offense is so, like, like seriously, seriously, like gets out of the gate, you guys can probably, you know, they, they want to score quickly. So what do you guys have to do to control that so it doesn't so you don't look up and go you're down by twenty one? You know, how are you gonna guys get you guys to slow that down so they could be, you know, playing Cincinnati football? Uh, we just gotta do what we prepare, uh leading up to the game. It's not rocket science. It's not nothing uh special or in particular that we have to do to stop them from quote unquote uh getting up by twenty one. We're just gonna do what we always do. Our next question is from Zachary Braziller of the New York Post. 
you said, you know, inside you guys are you guys are confident and you, you do hear the other stuff. I mean, it, is there a chip on your shoulder? Is there motivation, you know, oh, yeah, for mo- most definitely. Prove- Can I keep talking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um, we always have a chip on our shoulder, no matter if we're better than the team, if we're going in as the underdog. Uh, we just know we deserve so much more, and it's always been like that since I got here. So the fact that we're able to finally be where we always wanted to be, um, it puts more of a chip on our shoulder. There's more motivation. All right, we have time for two more questions. First question will be from Gary Miller. It's sauce awesome for the uh, you know those that haven't covered you and know all about it. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the nickname? If if anyone even knows your name is a mod, if you mostly called Sauce, and if Coach Fick refuses to call you Sauce, or how that's evolved over time. Um, I'm mostly called Sauce uh, by my teammates, some of my coaches. Coach Fick, he still called me a mod, um, which is fine. I don't mind being called my government name. And that was a nickname that was brought, that was gave to, given to me by my little league coach, Coach Tez, when I was around six years old. All right, our next question is from Chad Brendel. Chad, Sauce, so just curious. This off season, Brady Collins challenged you to get up to two hundred pounds. Um, how difficult was that, <laughs> making that goal, and how much do you feel it has helped on the field? Uh, to not just have the length and athleticism, but now have some of the strength as well. I appreciate him for for that. Um, it took a lot of dedication uh, by me because I always just like eating junk food, Wendy's, twenty four seven. I spend so much money on Wendy's; it don't make no sense throughout the week. But I feel like I'm able to play faster, even though I put weight on. I feel like I I've gotten bigger, faster, and stronger, which is good, and it's. Help my technique on the line at the line of scrimmage and down the field. All right, we'll do one last question uh, from Bill Carroll. Bill, again, Mr. Garner, thank you so much for your time and your attention. There's been a lot made of Jamison Williams and speed for reasons. He's blazing fast, but what are some areas where you may have an advantage? Areas where you may be able to take advantage of things that you have. I'm going to just do everything that y'all see me do on film, and that's going to help me get the job done. All right, Ahmad, thank you for your time today. Thanks yeah. for joining us. Media, this concludes the Zoom interview session. A full transcript along with video and audio files will be distributed via email and posted in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic section of the College Football Playoff Media Portal. To gain access,